In this video, we're going to consider the precision of a number that results from a mathematical operation. And the mathematical operations of interest here are whether you multiply and divide, or whether you add and subtract. So, let's begin. Consider these three numbers that I have here, and let's add them together. My calculator gives me the number for this 303.631. Now the answer is, how precise should my number be? Should I report it to 303? Should I keep all six of these digits? What should I do? Well, the key lay in the fact that your mathematical operation is addition and which falls under the addition subtraction rule. So what we want to do is we want to take this table and use the box and dot method that was shown on the previous video. And we want to consider, determine the number of significant figures in each of these and also the number of places. So let's do that. The box and dot for this box. Do you see a dot? Yes but there's no trailing zeros. So this digit has six significant figures and it's good to the third decimal place. So let's write six significant figures and it was good to the third and I'm gonna put DP for decimal place. Now let's look at this number, the box and dot. Box, do you see a dot? Yes, but in this case, there also happens to be no trailing zeros. So you can see that in the box, there's one, two, three, four, five, six figs. And the, in the most precise digit is in the second decimal place. So let's write this, five sig figs. And this is precise to the second decimal place. And finally, let's do this one. Box, do you see a dot? Yes, but there's no trailing zeros. This number has four sig figs and it's good to the first decimal place. Oops, let me get rid of that. Four sig figs, and it's good to the first decimal place. So what should I report this answer? It's easy. I only need to pay attention to this column. I do not care about this column because I'm not multiplying or dividing. I am adding or subtracting, so I'm gonna use the places rule. The least precise number here is the first decimal place. An answer can mean no better then the weakest, least precise number used to get that answer. Just as a chain can be no stronger than its weakest link, an answer can be no better than the weakest number used to get it. In this case, it happens to be the first decimal place. So my analysis says I'm gonna put a little tick mark under the first decimal place, and that is the last digit that I can keep I'm going to cross these off and I'm going to discard these. And so my final answer becomes 303.6. And you can see, indeed, oh, this is going to be good too. I should have written this down here to make this clear. So my least precise number is good to the first decimal place. So you can see my answer is good to the first decimal place as a result of adding subtracting. Let's do the same thing, only this time, let's multiply those numbers and see how that changes. If I multiply these three numbers together, my calculator gave, gave me the number uh, 1 million, sorry about that, 1 million 36 seven five zero point three three. To how many digits can I properly write this number and reflect the true precision? Now I'm going to look back at my table here. And this time, it's this number that I don't care about. Because why? I'm multiplying and dividing, so I really don't care about the places. This time I care about sig figs. Because I'm multiplying and dividing, I'm going to use the sig fig rule. Six significant figures is more precise than five, is more precise than four. So four is my least precise number 
Therefore, my answer can only be good to four significant figures. I'll go back. If you do the box and dot, you can see all of those are significant, but I can only keep the first four. One, two, three, four. And I'm going to put a line through everything else. The first number that I'm crossing off is a seven. Remember, if the first number that you're crossing off is a five, six, seven, eight, or nine, then you round up the first number that you're keeping. And so in this particular case, I'm going to keep the one, I'm going to keep the zero, three, I'm going to make the six a seven due to rounding. Now, I can't just drop these three digits because if I did, I would have the number 1037, but I don't. I need 1,037,000. And so I don't drop any numbers to the, to the left of the decimal point, but I replace them with zeros. I can just drop the numbers on the right. And so here's the final answer, 1,037,000. Does that meet our requirement that the answer have four sig figs? Let's check it out. Box. Do you see a dot? No. So this is the end of your answer. So you can see the number 1,000, 1,037,000 indeed has four sig figs. Let's do one more example. Let's add these two numbers. And let's go back to this. So we'll go a little faster motion here. My calculator gives me 1,004, but what's the correct answer? Well, let me see. I'll do my multiply divide rule here, which is sig figs. And I want to do my places, which are going to be addition subtraction. I'm going to go ahead and work this table out uh, for completeness. So this has three sig figs, and it's good to the first decimal place. And this number has two sig figs, and it's good to the first decimal place. So if I'm adding and subtracting, my number can be good to the first decimal place. Oh, by the way, if I'm multiplying or dividing, it can only be good to two sig figs. But here, I'm adding and subtracting, so I don't really care about this one for now. So we'll just leave that blank. Now we go back to this. And let's do our analysis. It can be good to one decimal place. So I draw a line under the first decimal place. That's the last digit that I can keep. And indeed, it looks like my calculator gave me exactly the number I needed this time. My final answer is going to be 100.4. That is the result of the addition operation. Good to one decimal place. Now let's look back at this one and let's multiply and divide these. 99.2 times 1.2 gives me 119.04. In this particular case, what do I need to do? I need to now pay attention to this two because I'm multiplying and dividing. I'm gonna use that rule and I no longer care about the decimal place rule because of what I'm doing with my multiplication uh, uh, process here, operation. So I can keep two sig figs. So I keep one, I keep two, I put cross marks between of those. And then what I'm gonna do here is this nine will round this one up to a two. Because it's in the ones place, because it's to the left, I can't drop it, I replace it but I do drop everything to the right. And so I come up with the answer 120. Is that correct? Let's do the analysis and see. Box, do you see a dot? No. So this number has two significant figures, and indeed that's what was required, that we have two significant figures. I hope this helps you uh, sort through the difficulties of doing mathematical operations. Remember, this is your key. If you're multiplying and dividing, count sig figs and forget about the places. On the other hand, if you're adding and subtracting, you only need to pay attention to the places and not to the sig figs. Mm -hmm.